Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, President Clinton, uh, Foreign Minister Nicola. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to be with you today, and thank you, uh, President Clinton, for uh, being with us. Uh, this March, as you know very well, uh, President Clinton and I went on a tremendously uh, productive uh, and meaningful trip to Haiti. As you know, Haiti is at a turning point. It has a real chance for stability and potential uh, prosperity. Uh, President Clinton and I wanted to support the efforts of President Preval and Prime Minister uh, Pierre Louis. And we wanted to send a message to the international community. Haiti needs and deserves our help. The UN Stabilization Mission, uh, MINUSTA, has helped guarantee uh, physical security and political stability. Now the people of Haiti need job opportunities and access to basic services. We must act uh, together now. At the Doha Conference in Washington, D.C., governments pledged $353 million. The challenge now is to convert these pledges into contributions. This is why I have asked President Clinton to serve as a special envoy for the early recovery of Haiti. No one is better placed for this mission. He knows the country. He loves the people. They love him. This is the strong wish of Haitian people and Haitian government and myself as Secretary General. Having seen how dynamic leadership uh, he has mobilized and demonstrated in the wake of a tsunami uh, in 2004 and 2005, whole international community greatly appreciated uh, Mr. President's uh, leadership role. We need your support and your leadership at this time for our people and government of Haiti. In fact, the Clinton Global Initiative is already working for Haiti. It is a feeding school children. It is working to improve urban health. It is building regional solidarity through students' exchanges. President Clinton is committed to Haiti's future. So I thank you in the name of the United Nations, uh, Mr. President, for taking on this important uh, mission. And I count on your leadership. And thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, for uh, joining us. We will work uh, together with you. Now, without much further ado, I'd like to invite President Clinton to give you his vision of the way ahead. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. Foreign Minister Nicholas, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some of you know, maybe all of you know by now, that I have been uh, interested in Haiti for a very long time. Uh, I said when the Secretary General and I returned from our trip in March, and I will say again, I think that Haiti notwithstanding the total devastation wreaked by the four storms last year, has the best chance to escape the darker aspects of its history uh, in the 35 years I have been going there, including uh, the period uh, following the United States' efforts to restore President Aristide and replace the military dictator in the early 90s and the efforts we made after that. Why do I say that? First, because of the leadership of Prime, uh, President Preval and Prime Minister Pierre Louis. Second, because of the work of the United Nations peacekeeping and police forces. Uh, no effort like that is without controversy or incident, but they have basically done a good job. I, I was there in the streets of Cite Soleil. I saw the children walking without fear. Uh, third, uh, because of the passage of the HOPE II trade legislation last year in the United States Congress, which will give extraordinary access to American markets uh, by Haitian products for eight more years. And finally, because of <coughs> the Secretary General's interest and the success of the first donor conference that we had in Washington. 
what I want to do is to first follow the plan that Haiti has laid out for its recovery and its future. After the Secretary General asked for uh, Dr. Collier to prepare an analysis of Haiti and a set of recommendations for its way forward, uh, we met with the leaders of the Haitian government and we asked them to respond to the Collier report with their own plan. We said that no point in any of us trying to do something based on what we think is right. We have to do what you think is right and what you believe the people need. Uh, they produced, uh, I thought, a very impressive program called Haiti, A New Paradigm, and we intend to follow that. Secondly, we want to make sure that, uh, as we do, we do what uh, the United Nations attempted to do when I worked in the tsunami areas, to build back better, to leave things better than they were before the natural disasters. I will be uh, accountable in this work to the Secretary General and the United Nations and to the people of Haiti and their governmental leaders. I saw some reports in the Haitian press speculating that this dollar a year job I took was somehow an imperialist plot to take over Haiti. Uh, all I want to do is help the Haitians take over control of their own destiny. It's all I have ever wanted for Haiti. And uh, that's all the Secretary General wants. This job, as I see it, will involve the following elements. First, we have to support the government in the implementation of its program, Haiti, a new paradigm, to generate new jobs and enhance the delivery of basic services. Second, we have to assist the recovery effort with the same fervor that was brought to the tsunami nations to build back better, that is, better schools, better hospitals, better housing better public facilities, better infrastructure. And we have to do a better job of disaster prevention and mitigation. And I'm encouraged that I've had a number of people who know a lot about this call and uh, offer their services just to try to help. Uh, we know from experience in other places we can do a lot to mitigate disasters and that we can do a lot in Haiti. We're about to face another storm se season without that kind of mitigation, and I don't want to go another year without it. Third, we want to encourage more international private sector investment in Haiti, and to make Haiti more competitive to attract such investment. When the Secretary General and I in visited the industrial park, for example, the people we talked to said, this is a really good place to do business. These people work like crazy. They're very productive. Uh, but because there's not a broad-based revenue collection system and because the power system is unreliable, it costs too much to get into the industrial park and the power is too expensive. We can fix that. And I intend to do everything I can to do that. Fourth. We want to encourage the donors both to honor the commitments they have already made at the donors conference. And we will do just what we did before. I'll have a grid and we'll match the donors to the Haitian plan and the work that needs to be done and it'll be a totally transparent process so all of you can keep up with what is going on as we go forward. We also want to do everything we can to make sure that these donor commitments are aligned as closely as possible with the Haitian program we have been given. So some of the donor money has already been pledged to a specific purpose. As nearly as I can determine, all of those purposes are consistent with the urgent need to rebuild the country. So there's no problem now with that. But we will attempt to not only collect the money and spend it uh, where the donors want it to go, in a way that is transparent and totally above board, but to do it in a way that is consistent with the priorities and the plans 
the Haitians themselves have outlined. Next, we want to encourage philanthropists, NGOs, and civil society operations generally to work together more and to provide additional badly needed resources. There are lots of us involved in Haiti now. Last year, uh, my foundation directly did a lot of the work to try to help develop the AIDS plan and to get inexpensive AIDS medicine there. And last year, as Secretary General said, at the Clinton Global Initiative, we had one of our so-called mega commitments where, I don't know, eight or nine different groups pledged $130 million worth of assistance over the next couple of years. But as nearly as I can determine, there is no uh, registry of every NGO that is doing something in Haiti. And I will attempt to get a, a combined list of that. There's a lot of wonderful work being done there now. And then we will attempt to establish some sort of coordinating mechanism to make sure that all of us who work there in the non-governmental capacity are also, insofar as we possibly can, working in harmony with the Haitian government's plans for the future and in a way that maximizes the rebuilding. I will next attempt to deal with the energy crisis and to accelerate what is being done uh, in clean energy. There are a couple of wind energy projects going on there, but we believe there's a lot of economically viable uh, opportunity yet untapped for clean energy and also for energy efficiency, particularly in manufacturing facilities and in the way the homes and the schools and the hospitals and the public buildings that have to be rebuilt are rebuilt. Uh, we have seen in a lot of the work that I do in Africa how clean energy, which many people think is just an indulgence for rich countries, can actually be an economic salvation for poor communities and can lift the quality of life and the real standard of living. So we will do some more work on that. And finally, I hope that in the process of doing all this, we will continue to elevate awareness of the, both the pain but the promise of Haiti in the international community and that there are real, genuine economic opportunities there, particularly as we uh, deal with the government's priorities in rebuilding the infrastructure and reconstructing the agricultural capacity of the country. So I am very hopeful about this. Uh, I'll do my best. It's a formidable task, but I'll say again, in all the years I've been going there, this is the best chance the Haitians have ever had to escape the, the darker parts of their past and to claim the promise of the future. And I hope that the substantial Haitian diaspora, particularly those in the United States, Canada, and France, where the numbers are largest, will see this as an opportunity also to do whatever they can to help their native land and to believe that many of the factors which cause them to leave can now be erased if we all do this together.